Good morning. <laughs> Another morning. Uh -oh. Another job. <laughs> We did lots of different jobs and um, tried to have a look at our bow thruster. <laughs> um, what did you do? You say because I can't remember. You took the oh the motor yeah the last one yeah all the motors off stripped off nothing wrong with that so it's in the tube it's like wrong in the tube with the bow thruster. So this is the fun day. So Richard's bought. We have an underwater camera. Oh. That break. <laughs> I tell you what, this is funny. I stuck it up my nose to see what we could see. Okay. <laughs> There's something wrong with that. You just have to, don't you? No. Anyway, well maybe not. <laughs> don't stick cameras up your nose. <laughs> but this should be quite cool actually. We might see all sorts down there. Do I? Might yeah. see sharks. <laughs> but there was a shark one. <clears throat> yeah, well yeah, well, well, the day. No. So um <laughs> And that means um, pumping up the boat, the little boat. Either going for a swim, which I am not doing in November. It's freezing. Yeah, so um, luckily the boat that was moored next to us at the marina has gone, so that means Sold. we've um, got space. lots of space. So pop the little and boat that in. And that side. Both sides, no boats, it's great. Um, and then see if we can somehow Get wiggle the camera. this up the tube from the little boat. Through the thruster divert, through the grid, up the tube to the propeller, somehow. <laughs> and see, well the aim is to see first of all if there's anything lodged in there, which we're pretty sure. No, there won't be isn't. anything in it. I uh, just want to see the state of the propeller. Yeah. And make sure it's actually turning when you turn the top. Yeah. And then if it is, then it's full on Vetus warranty. Good luck. Yeah. Oh dear. It's never an easy life, is it? <laughs> if you had a motorhome, there's something wrong, you just land underneath. Job done. Very true. Check it up, but, or you're um, going to get a puncher. This wasn't very <laughs> expensive though, was it? I oh, know, it was only about 35 quid. Yeah, so... Probably we'll, won't work. <laughs> but I mean, I'm not being funny, this is probably quite a good bit of kit to have anyway, because... Oh yeah, you, you know, can get you can, in sea places everywhere. Yeah, yeah it'd be so quite handy. We'll put a link in the description. And I'll try not to run I won't get one because she's going to break it before we even bother using it. We'll scrap this video, delete it and start again. <laughs> Just go back to watching Star Wars. <laughs> oh, let's see what this one entails. Oh, oh, God. Wish us luck. <laughs> <laughs> Got no <the> Wi Fi. <laughs> you might get to see that cold water swimming. <laughs> I can feel it through the glove. Is it? I, I can't feel my fingers. Oh, my hand. Wow, it's really weird. 
let me just make sure that did actually record something. Okay. So, Rich is now approaching <laughs> the other side. <laughs> well. Hold on, Jack! <laughs> oh no, it's Rose, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'll tell you, not being funny, old Jack that fell in the water, he would have died with his second. There would have been none of this five minutes to have a sing song. <laughs> it had just gone. <laughs> This couldn't have happened in the summer when you wouldn't have mind. I would have jumped in. Yeah, putting your, I your feet in. So we know one side is completely clear, one side of the tube. You can see the propeller. The propeller's absolutely fine. So it looks like it's back to the old story of gears again. Richard's trying to thaw himself out by the fire now. <laughs> oh, that's so cold. You know when you sleep on your arms and you get numb? Yeah. That's what it feels like. So not much more we can do for our bow thruster at the moment. We just have to wait for our broker to get onto Collingwood um, and basically see what they're going to do about it. Um, but we've inspected everything we can um, and it, it needs to be out of the water to have a proper look at it. Uh, we took the antifreeze out of our system. Now we didn't take it all out, so don't panic. It's not all full of water. You get a jug underneath it, and there you go. It does take a while, um, but yeah, the pressure will drop. And as the pressure drops, <laughs> what you'll have to do that then is then pump the pressure up underneath the step and just keep going. If you're on your own, it's going to take quite a long time. But yeah. with the two of us, yeah, we were pumping the pressure as we were draining it off. I won't drain it a lot off because we, I say we've already done it. And now you can see, it's quite blue. Mm. We've checked the antifreeze content of it now and it's a lot better, but before that was really dark blue, wasn't it? It was, yeah. It was like pure antifreeze. And the radiators, yeah, we're not getting warm. What would you say, 10% of the radiator was hot? Yeah. The rest of it was stone cold after running the system for like two hours. So it was, it was not ideal, was it? No. Um, it was just too much antifreeze in the system. So whoever put the antifreeze in, put too much in. And antifreeze doesn't transfer heat. <laughs> it wasn't very good, was it? No. It was a little bit chilly to say the least. But, yeah. So yeah, you'd keep doing that until you got the full jug and Lock it off, and we did two jugs, didn't we? Yeah. So we did two jugs per radiator, which is quite a lot. Yeah. And then ran the system, it ran all night, didn't it? Really, yeah. on and off all night. We've checked the antifreeze content now, and it's, yeah, perfect. So it's all mixed up properly now, and we've got a warm boat. Yay! Happy days. <laughs> so there's our pressure gauge underneath the steps, and you can see it's just hovering about over one which for a hot system, that's not, not a problem. It should be just around one. So that, that's all good. But we'll show you where to take the pressure up once you've drained your radiators, because as soon as you drain, that's going to go down to zero. Okay, so here's your pressure loop. So this one goes to your cold, cold water feed, straight from the normal pressure. So you'd open that one. And then here's the other valve, and you'd start opening that ever so slightly and then watch the gauge, because as you open that, the gauge will start pressurising up. And as soon as it's got up to its pressure, lock that one off, and don't forget to shut that one down. And that's how you pump your pressure back up on your radiator system. So when we did ours, 
regards to making it easier, Richard was at the radiators <laughs> draining um, the antifreeze out whilst I was on the um, valve um, putting the pressure back up because as you take quite a bit out, the pressure drops, so to make sure it didn't get to zero. Yeah, otherwise you're just not going to drain anything out. It's not like a gravity system where you can just open it and it pre-fills itself. Yeah, so uh, that just made it a little bit With two bit of us, for yeah, us, you, you could fill up a litre quickly, couldn't you? Yeah. It didn't take long at all. You just sit there holding a the jug and she's topping the pressure up all the time and it comes pouring out. Uh, so, yeah, so it, take it was us successful. Too long. It's, it's worked, so no more heating problems, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Yeah, it's been working perfectly. Yeah. It's toasty <laughs> and warm in here now. <laughs> um, just thought we'd better say, obviously, do not pour that antifreeze down your sink because it's poisonous. So it does need to be disposed of um, as a chemical. So do not throw it into the water, whatever you do, because it would be poisonous to wildlife. So thought we'd better just say that. So in our last video, I um, came up with a little plan to try and battle the condensation. Now I know you can get film and, and various things to, to help and double glazing, um, but I did these little hessian bags, which you can see. Um, and it, it did seem to work actually, it, did, it hasn't cured the condensation um, but it definitely has helped so just think it's a bit more of a natural way perhaps um, to try and sort of combat a bit of the condensation and um, I've just sort of hung them at the windows as you can see um, at the portholes down the back and it does seem to to be helping a bit so at least that's something and I think they look quite pretty. So here I am in our bathroom. Um, we realised yesterday we went on a little cruise um, happened to go through Shepparton Lock and saw one of our followers on there. Hello. And we realised that we never did give an update I don't think on our toilet from a previous video. We were having problems with it literally sucking waste. Um, it took so many flushes. Um, and we're happy to say uh, that it was completely replaced. So we had somebody come out and have a look at it, look at various um, bits and bobs, look at the sensor, look at the pipes. Um, and in the end, they literally just replaced the whole toilet. Sometimes they try and say, oh, well, boat, boat toilets aren't so good, but they should suck your waste away it should be fairly powerful so yeah luckily that one was replaced so all is good in the world of blues right now so here we are out in the chilly and um, we went for Gold. a cruise yesterday just a short cruise just through Shepparton Lock and down to Dockett Eddy Lane lunch cruise a little lunch cruise with my friend and we had um, a bit of a catastrophe in the lock, wasn't bit it? Of an incident. A yeah. bit of an incident, yeah. It was self-service, um, Richard came in absolutely fine, and then as <laughs> we came out of the lock, it made quite a noise actually, didn't it? Quite a bang. I don't know whether you Massive heard it. Massive bang. Oh, I did. So yeah. I shouted to you. Yeah, because I heard it from the outside because I was operating the lock. And um, I was like, what was that? And I thought Richard had just sort of bashed the side of it. No. Um, but no, we had um, a breakage. Yeah. So, well, uh, basically, <laughs> I fished it back out the lock. One of our rope fenders, as we were moving along, coming out, the, uh, it was quite windy, wasn't it? It was quite windy, yeah. It blown us into the side of the lock, which is normally not a problem because the fenders are just bouncing back off. We weren't going fast, weren't doing nothing. Nope. And then this little one decided that it wanted to get stuck on the wall. Because we've got the air ones, haven't we? Yeah. We've got three air ones down the side, and we've still got these that came with the boat. Um, the air ones have just squashed you and pushed you back out. And even when they, we've seen them squash bad, haven't we? Yeah. Nothing happens. They'll just squash up, and yeah, not a problem. No. I mean, the worst case is it'll burst, but you just take it off and get a new one. Mm. But no, this naughty little one got stuck. Yeah, and as you can see, and then went twang, and the metal bit is the still hook is attached. still intact. What it's done, we'll show you. Yeah, it's quite drastic, really. <laughs> outside. Yeah, we'll go outside. Sure. So, this is what it should look like. 
Right, there's our rope fender. Here's the clip. And here there's a metal bar going across here. But what's happened is this metal bar has actually ripped out of the holder and got missing. So yep. now we have a hole here with no bar on it. So yeah, quite tragic. Uh, gonna be quite difficult to fix. But I don't know what they're gonna do. I don't know if we better weld a new one in because we don't know what's behind it. No. If it's got insulation behind it, you shouldn't really weld that because you might set fire to the insulation inside the boat. And yeah, don't want to burn the boat down. No. <laughs> so, hey, what we're going to do is take these metal clips off. Yeah. Um, we're going to take those off and we're going to replace them with 5mm thick plastic cable ties. So that if it ever happens again and this pulls really hard, it'll snap the cable tie. Yeah. It won't break the boat, it'll break the cable tie and our rope fender will just be floating around in the river. But we can always get that back out cable tie it back on yeah but at least it won't break things so no, we're quite surprised that it yeah i thought it, it literally just metal. went to there with a bit of wood stuck there and it just yeah ripped this metal out yeah ripped that bar off and it was a very big bang so we'll be getting rid of them yeah <laughs> sacrificial cable ties here we come so um yeah, we um, always seem to get ourselves into trouble, some sort of trouble, we're one way or out. another. I don't know how. Because we're always on the river. Yeah, yeah, we do go out a lot. So, so what did you say about Shepperton Lock on the way oh, yeah. back? Oh yeah, so on the way back, after our incident on the way out, on the way back, wouldn't it? You opened the gates and in we went, no problems again. Yeah. Shut the gates, walked down the other end, nothing had happened. No! <laughs> Just there pushing the buttons and nothing had happened. It's like, oh, we could be here a while. And he's looking at me saying, you know, if you close the sluices the other end, and I'd actually checked them twice, I'd pressed that button twice <laughs> yeah. before I went up the other end. So I went marching back down the end, pressed the button again, they didn't move. No, no sluices, it's no. like, uh oh. So, oh no, here we go, <laughs> we're going to get lock. stuck in the lock. <laughs> went back down the other end, and it decided to work. So I don't know what that was all about. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> But um, yeah, you might think we're a bit unlucky because we've had quite a few bits and bobs go wrong, but I guess we do yeah. use the boat. So I suppose, you know. We've done a lot of hours in it. Yeah, we've done 170, 171 hours we've done on our engine since May. May the first. Yeah, since May. So yeah, we're out, out a lot. Yeah. Others have still got delivery mileage on them, haven't they? <laughs> and they, they haven't moved. They literally move their stuff on and sat on them. Yeah. Um, yeah, but and it keeps you occupied, doesn't it? We love it. It gives, you, it gives you something to do, you know. Sort of, um, we've got quite proficient in DIY boating. Yeah, yeah. We've <laughs> met a lot of people. Yeah, we have. So Some of them have actually had the same problems. Yeah, yeah. So, um, with the heating, we, we thought we'd show you that because we've spoken to quite a few people with similar wide beams that exactly the same thing has happened. And Facebook. And Facebook as well. Facebook. Um, and the guy that we met at the lock yesterday, um, he had the same problem too. So he said, well, I mean, we did it ourselves, but he had a guy from Collingwood come and do yeah, it. Yeah, come so. down, they did all this for him and his yeah. is working fine now, isn't it? So. Oh, and one little tip, Richard, you were going to say about the Vetus <laughs> warranty. Ah, yeah, don't forget, Vetus warranty is three years. So if you do have a problem, anything that's Vetus in your first year, if it's intermittent, still report it, email it so you have proof of email, because that intermittent fault in two years' time may pack up. And if it does pack up, contact your broker or whoever you bought the boat from, and Vetus will still repair it under their full warranty. So Yeah, it's worth yeah, knowing Yeah, we heard that. about that, a chap two and a half years, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. After his bow thruster had intermittent problems in year one, and it then sorted itself out and then did pack up. And yeah, he did get it under warranty. So yeah, always, if it's intermittent fault, tell the brokerage or whoever you bought the boat from and email and save the email. Yeah. Because it's definitely worth it. Yeah, it's definitely worth knowing that as well because obviously you, you get a boat and think you've got a year's warranty but some of the um, manufacturers that supply parts on it, the warranty is Yeah, longer, Vetus so. is a long warranty. Yeah, so yeah long warranty that's period. Because that's the toilet, the bow thruster. I'm not sure about the water pumps, they're Vetus, but I don't know if they're three years, they might be. Yeah. But it's worth knowing. It's worth knowing, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's getting chillier now. Um, we're still trying to give you some vlogs. Um, so, <laughs> like always, if you fancy giving us a cheeky little like, it's much appreciated. 
And if you haven't subscribed yet, it doesn't cost anything, doesn't spam you, anything like that. Just hit that subscribe button and it helps our <laughs> analytics and our channel. Oh, I don't know. Um, and <laughs> if you fancy buying us a coffee. Yeah, I'm having one now, <laughs> you know me. <laughs> that would be much appreciated too. And we hope you enjoyed this vlog. See you next time. Bye. Bye.